Everybody loves a love story. Everybody, it seems, except the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service. In our post-9-11 world, immigration has become increasingly tough on, of all groups, widows. A foreigner who marries a U.S. citizen is entitled to become a U.S. resident, but immigration wants to deport several hundred widows and a few widowers, foreigners who'd been married to American citizens when the Americans died. Immigration claims, basically, that a widow is not a wife, that if the widow did not complete the process to become a U.S. resident while her husband was alive, she cannot remain in the country. If that sounds a little strange, wait till you hear what happened to Raquel Williams when she met up with immigration. But first, the love story. It meant to be. We it was meant to, meant, to meant to be. Raquel Williams, a young nursing student from Brazil, was visiting Florida when one night she and three girlfriends drove into a gas station. They caught the eye of a car full of guys who were also getting gas. I guess they noticed that we were, you know, not from here. It was uh, they noticed about four young women. Yes, and then like how oh. how astute of them. <laughs> right, they're like, oh, where are you guys from? You know, oh, my name is Derek. Nice to meeting you. And then that chance meeting with Derek Williams led to love and marriage, <laughs> and parenthood. Two years after they met, Ian was born. So you have a new husband, a new kid. New kid, you new a family. Young mother. Yeah, but life but was good, huh? Life is beautiful. And then the unthinkable happened. Yeah. Tell me about that. I woke up 4:30 in the morning, five o'clock, and to find my husband lay on the couch. I can see that something's wrong. I get closer and he's not breathing. And I call 911 and they stay on the phone with me. And then I hear that they coming. And I said, please, please, I'll go fast, fast. And it was, he, was, he was gone by that time. Derek had insomnia, so he'd watch TV on their couch during the night. But he also had breathing problems and an irregular heartbeat, which proved fatal. After he died, Raquel and her son Ian moved in with Derek's parents. Okay. And three months after Derek died, Raquel finally had the immigration interview that she'd been asking for for a year. The interview to prove that her marriage was legitimate. You went to have the interview with Ian and with a death certificate and with all the proof you needed that it was a real marriage. So what happened then? I explained what happened. My husband passed away. Uh, what can I do from now? This is uh, his death certificate. Oh, your case, your case is gonna be denied. Your case is going to be denied. Your case is going to be denied. They said it just like that. Just like that. And they said, you're going to have to go back to Brazil. And I said, I have my son. You know, this is my son. He's an American citizen. And uh, they said, he can stay. You had a five-month-old son. Five, yeah, five months. And, and they said, your son can baby. stay in America, and you have to go home to Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Raquel, like the other widows you'll meet, all entered the U.S. legally. Still, immigration has been rejecting requests for permanent residence if the American spouse died before they had their immigration interview to prove their marriage was based on love. But the government can take months, sometimes more than a year, to schedule that interview. Raquel's mother-in-law, Linda, says Raquel shouldn't be penalized because the bureaucracy didn't move fast enough. They were doing things legally. They filed the right papers. They filed them in a timely manner. Things were not processed in a timely manner, and, there, and then my son died. This was not something that you can foresee. Raquel and her in-laws are raising Ian together. They've managed to hold off deportation while they appeal immigration's decision. But they know a knock on the door can come at any time. They know it, but they still can't believe it. We're Americans. You know, we're, we belong. This is our country, and my country tree is threatening to send my daughter-in-law and my grandson out of the country. That's a, he's an American citizen. They're not threatening to throw your grandson out of the country. But who would separate a mother and a child? My country would separate Ian's mother and him? That's not right. That is not right. And this is America. Monica Monroe is still grieving over the death of her husband, Tim. 
Monica is a movie makeup artist from Germany. She met Tim when they were both vacationing in Prague, where she said it was love at first sight. It's a beautiful place to fall in love. Well, yes, but we, we, we were even blind to the place because all we could see were each other. It's like the whole world changed. We felt like we cannot survive without each other anymore. So he begged me to come to Los Angeles. So I came two weeks later. And two months after that, Tim took her out in a boat in Sequoia National Park. And then he went on his knees and... He actually went on his knees? Yes. In a boat? And he asked me to, to become his wife. Here are some of Tim's paintings. Tim was an artist, and their house doubled as his studio. She told us her life had never been better until it all fell apart. Everything happened so fast. It was like we were in our life, and then he died of a heart attack, and then, and then he was gone. And now she's fighting deportation, trying to stay where she and Tim built their life together. Why is it important to you to stay in your house and not go back to Germany? Because it's my home and it's a place that I was the happiest in my life. While a foreign spouse can become a U.S. resident, immigration argued in court that a widow is not a spouse, citing this book, Black's Law Dictionary, which defines spouse as a married person. That rules out widows, said immigration, because a widow is no longer married. But the federal court in Massachusetts rejected that argument because just a few lines down, the same law dictionary defines a surviving spouse as one who outlives the other. So the court said, widows are spouses and are eligible to become U.S. residents. But immigration is appealing that decision and three other federal court rulings that have all gone against them. We try to find out why the government is being so tough on widows but immigration and its parent agency, Homeland Security, declined our requests for interviews. So we went to the top to a press conference held by Homeland Security Chief Michael Chertoff. Why is your department refusing U.S. residency to foreign widows who are in legitimate marriages when their American spouse died? All I can tell you is, without getting into you know, specific cases and arguing the facts and circumstances, that I think uh, the lawyers have an obligation to pursue the matter through the system until we get a final resolution from the courts. Four courts, sir, have ruled in favor of the widows. Your department appeals the cases every time. I, don't, I think what you're seeing is a normal uh, part of responsible uh, lawyering, if I may say so. But attorney Brent Renison says the government could accept all the court decisions instead of appealing them. Renison is working pro bono for many of the widows. He's filed a class action suit to force immigration to simply examine each marriage to determine whether it was legitimate. That is, instead of automatically turning all of them down. He says making sure the marriage was bona fide would cost the government a lot less than to keep fighting in various courts. All we're asking for is a little bit of common sense. We need someone to tell the agency to stop this madness or Congress to um, enact some laws that, that provide for this. Bills are pending in the House and Senate to direct immigration to change its policy. That can't happen soon enough for Deanna Engstrom. Her husband, Todd, was killed in Iraq. They'd met in her native Kosovo, fallen in love, and gotten married near Todd's home in Illinois. Then he signed up with a private contractor to train Iraqi soldiers. Why did he go to Iraq? He told me that he wanted to serve his country. It was his duty to do that. And then one day he was in a convoy, and what happened? The, the truck that he was in, it was hit by the RPG. Todd's father, Ron, got the first call explaining how Todd had died. Todd was killed instantly. It's the kind of call that no parent should have to receive. And soon after that, Ron heard that immigration wanted Deanna to leave the country. How did you react to that? Uh, disbelief. We had... Um, Buried our son, was in the shock of that. We were just in shock again. Immigration said Deanna couldn't become a resident because she hadn't had her immigration interview with Todd, so she couldn't prove her marriage was bona fide. There was no question 
that they were in love, uh, that they were happy, that they were going to build a future together. No question. Deanna is part of Brent Renison's class action suit, so she hasn't been deported yet. She and the other families feel the government has betrayed them, and worse, betrayed their dead husbands and sons. Cindy, what do you want our viewers to understand? That our son gave, gave his life for this country. And our government should stand behind him and do what he would have wanted.